Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Linode and setting up our very own Linux virtual private server. Before we get into that, just want to ask that if you enjoy my content, you like the video, be sure to consider subscribing to my channel, hitting that like button on the video, and turning on the post notifications. I really do appreciate it. I'm a new channel trying to build up my following and subscribers uh, get more views on my videos so anything you can do to help i really do appreciate it so let's go ahead and jump into the video if you're not aware linode is a cloud service provider they're great for setting up uh, quick servers to do testing but also production servers i use linode for my website multiple other websites and projects that i have from time to time so I can vouch for the reliability. I've never had any issues with my servers. Again, some of that's going to come back to how you configure them, the maintenance you do on them, things like that. Unlike with a shared hosting provider where many people host their WordPress sites and things like that, they manage the server for you. And in Linode, the server that you set up, you're going to be doing a lot of the setup, maintenance, things like that. But they make it really easy to get started, and that's what we're going to be going over today. Just setting up a basic Linux virtual private server, how to connect to it, things like that. And there'll be subsequent videos after this talking about the security of it, going over how you can secure your virtual private server, and then add on services like Apache web server, a WordPress site, things like that. So there'll be more videos to come. I'm also doing blog posts on my website. You can check that out at CredibleDev.com. If you're interested in the reading format versus the video, you can check it out there. Or if you miss something in the video, there's additional commentary on the blog that might be helpful to you. So be sure to check that out. So uh, you can head over to Linode's website, and I do have a discount code that's in the description. You can choose to use that if you want to. You don't have to. But if you do use that code, you're going to get a $100 credit that's good for 60 days. So if you want to try out Linode, see what it's about, that's a good way to start since you're not going to be out any money. So again, that'll be down in the description. You just click that link, and if you're not already a customer of Linode, you'll be able to take advantage of that credit. So once you've got your account set up, or if you already have an account, log into it. This is the main dashboard, and this is a secondary user I added to my account, so you don't see any servers here, but on my main account that I set this up with, there are uh, multiple servers there. So that's why you're not seeing them here. So to get started with creating our virtual private server, you're going to come to this page, you're going to click on Create Linode. Now, on this page, you have a few options, and some of these you might be interested in, but in this video, we're just going to set up a very basic virtual private server. Um, the Marketplace is where you would want to go for pre-configured virtual private servers. So, you can see there's a lot of different options here, such as WordPress, Nextcloud, if you want a cPanel, of course, you're going to need a license for that. Uh, Minecraft, there's a lot of options here. I think there's more than 80 or 100, maybe. Uh, so you have a lot of different possibilities here of pre-configured setups that you can choose from. So if you have something like this in mind, I would certainly recommend choosing one of these versus setting everything up from scratch unless you're like me and you just like to do that kind of thing. So we'll go ahead and go back over here to the distributions tab. And here we're gonna choose an image. And by far the easiest one to set up is gonna be the Ubuntu one. So we'll choose the 2204 LTS version. And next we need to select a region. We wanna select something that's close to us for me, that's probably going to be the Atlanta one. And then we need to set the size. So you can see the size and you can see the pricing monthly. These dedicated CPU ones are going to be much more expensive than the shared CPU ones. And the shared CPU ones are generally fine 
for most websites and uh, web apps, things like that, unless it's just a really popular app and you get a lot of traffic to it or it's very CPU or RAM intensive, then these are going to be fine. So we're going to go ahead and go with the Nanode 1 gigabyte, which we're going to see is $5 a month. You can actually run, uh, if you have a WordPress site or something like that, this one is going to be perfectly fine for that. You may be able to even host multiple websites on one this size. And you can always change it later. So once you set everything up, you've got your website running, uh, your website grows, you get more traffic, then you can upgrade to one of these other plans without having to recreate everything from scratch. So that's something that's really nice about these cloud providers. They make it easy for you to resize. You can even go down in size, but generally it's a little more complicated. You're going to have to do some manual things specifically with storage to shrink the drive before you resize to a smaller uh, host. But going up, you don't have to do anything. You just go in here and select the one you want to move to, and they'll handle the rest of it for you. So, like I said, we'll go ahead and go with this $5 option. And then here we'll give it a name. Uh, we'll just call it CD Test DPS. And the tags, we don't really need to do anything with that. It's completely optional. The root password, we want to set something secure here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create a secure password. And we don't have any SSH keys preloaded into Linode, so we'll just leave this blank for now. And the next video, we'll go over how to create the SSH keys and put them onto your Linode. Backups. It's a great idea if the data that is on your Linode is important. Uh, for us and this test, uh, this kind of test setup, we're not going to turn that on, but you should certainly consider that if you're going to be running something like a website that has really important stuff for you and you don't already have some other backup method. Private IP address, we don't really need this uh, in this instance. That's going to be for like a local private IP. So if you had multiple servers and you wanted them to be able to communicate with each other, then you're probably going to want the private IP. So we have our summary down here that we're creating a Ubuntu virtual private server. We're choosing the $5 a month plan in Atlanta. And we can go ahead and hit Create Linode. Now this process doesn't take very long at all. Uh, it's pretty crazy how quickly these can be built up now. I remember just a few years ago with uh, other hosting providers, the process they always told us like 20 or 30 minutes. Sometimes it might be longer than that. And now with Linode and a lot of other providers, it's actually pretty fast. So while we're waiting, uh, we can see the status here is provisioning. This will change uh, once the server's up and ready for us to connect to it. But we have some information here on this page, um, how many CPU cores we have, the RAM, of course, how much storage we have. We also have the IP address. Uh, they give you a SSH command here that you can use from a Linux or Mac terminal. We'll go over how to connect to this from a Windows machine here in a bit. And then you have this console here, which if you're ever uh, not able to SSH to this server, you can come here and use this console to get to it no matter what. So as long as it's powered on, you'll be able to get to it from this console. That's important to know because as you go to configuring the machine, especially firewall stuff, or you make changes to SSH and the port it runs on, this and that, you could potentially uh, make it to where you can't connect to it from your PC at home. So you can always come here to this console and roll back any config changes that you did. All right, so it looks like it's running now. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and we'll pull up a terminal here, paste that in, and this will let us SSH into the server. This is how we're going to work with it, install things on it, and all that sort of stuff. So the first time, uh, this is from a Linux machine, as you can see in the terminal. Um, the first time you connect, 
it's going to ask you to accept this uh, fingerprint. So you'll just hit yes. And now it's going to ask you for the password that you created. And go ahead and type to that in. Easy enough. So the first thing you always want to do when you connect to one of these is update them. So we can do that by typing apt update. And it'll go out and sync up all the packages and everything and see what's available for updates. And there's generally quite a few updates the first time you launch one of these. So we can see we have 96 packages that need to be updated. We can type apt upgrade here. And we'll just say yes to that. Let it do its updates. Shouldn't take very long at all for these updates to complete. And while we're waiting on this, I'll show you how to connect to this from a Windows machine. So over here on the Windows machine, you want to have this application called Putty. And if you don't already have this, you probably don't unless you've been connecting to servers like this. I'll have a link to it down in the description uh, below and it's also on the blog. So we'll go ahead and launch this, and it's pretty easy to do. You just type in the IP address of the Linode that you got from the dashboard page. And the port is going to be 22. SSH is the connection type. Let's give it a name, and we'll hit save here. That way we don't have to type in this IP address in the future. And we'll go ahead and hit open. And this is that same message that we saw on the terminal on Linux about the fingerprint. Just hit accept. And we'll type in our username, which will be root, and then the password. And there we are. We're logged into it here from Windows. So that was easy enough. Now we'll go ahead and head back to the Linux machine where we were doing the updates at. And it looks like we're almost done. And once this is done, we're probably going to need to reboot. And here it's telling us that there is a newer kernel. Now we need to restart. OK. We don't need to make any changes here to these services. So we'll hit OK. And now we can reboot our server. And we simply do that by typing reboot into the command line. And that's going to cause our PPS to reboot. And you'll have to wait for it to come back up. Be on their dashboard. It still says running even though it's restarting. But we'll give that a minute or so. Shouldn't take very long. Linux servers tend to start up pretty quickly. Let's see if it's back up yet. Not yet. And again, all right, now it's back up. And there we are. We're reconnected. We so we don't have any updates. Now we're ready to move on. So in the next video, we're going to be creating a new user. We're going to secure the SSH connection to this server uh, through multiple methods. We're going to set up um, a private key pair that we'll connect with instead of a password. We will disable SSH access with the root account, which is very important. And uh, we'll also give our new user uh, administrator privileges in Linux, which is going to be through the sudo group. We'll add our user to that group so we can do administrative tasks with our new user. And then we'll set up a firewall so that way we cut off access from any ports other than the ones we need. 
which initially is just going to be the SSH port 22. So we'll do that both on the server in Ubuntu, and we'll do that through Linode using their firewall as well. So you have kind of a, a double firewall protection there just in case something goes wrong with the firewall on the server. So stay tuned for that next video. The blog post is already up that covers those topics. So if you want to go ahead and head over to thecredibledev.com and check out that post. It's the latest one that I posted on Friday the 16th. And you can go ahead and follow that guide and set everything up. And like I said, there's going to be future posts uh, revolving around this virtual private server that we've set up in Linode, adding on additional services and things like that. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any of that. I really do appreciate it. If this video helped you out, you like my channel, be sure to hit that like button. And everybody have a great weekend.